How's things, man? Yeah, things are really good here. But yeah, you know, I'm still in uh, quarantine. Still in quarantine, oh, okay. Quarantine, but everything's, everything is okay now. And the government trying to solve all the problems. Yeah. All we got to do is just stay at home, you know? Yeah, you just uh, got to chill out, right? Spend the time with the family. And yeah. It's all going to be good. That's, that's, yeah, that, if we've seen the bigger picture, maybe this is the, the uh, good things, you know? Mm. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> we've got a lot of time to, to spend some time showing everybody case on Instagram, talk it through of course, it. Which normally, yeah. normally, we just have to put the post up and then everybody can like look at it and, and go, I wonder how we did that. I don't know, but it's cool. Yes. Uh, now yeah, we get cool. the chance to say, hey guys, how's it going? This is what I did and this is what the patient wanted. Um, Chetan says, welcome to the UK Rizal. Yeah, <laughs> welcome in the UK. I hope I hope I can be in, in UK. I've never been there actually, but I want someday maybe. Yeah, because I'm a talk- Manchunian, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were talking before. He's gonna come to see United play in Old Trafford. Uh, so me and Rizal we're already good friends already now. Um, yeah, officially. Anthony, Anthony is asking what the topic is for today. Um, so we had we said we we're gonna look at a couple of your cases, right? Um, yes, so all of my cases. We're going to go th- slowly through the cases. Uh, Rizal's mm-hmm. going to talk through the case. I'll field any questions. If there's some good questions in the comments, I will say to the guy, uh, Rizal, okay, so and so is asking the question. Alkesh is the United fan as well, so we've got three friends now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so any questions for Rizal uh, on the case, put them in the comments. Yeah. I will read mm-hmm. it out, definitely read it out, and then we'll get some really good learning from the cases going. I, uh, since I have a lot of cases, you know, yeah. maybe I'm just going to ask uh, the viewer what, uh, what a specific case that you, they want to, they, they want me to show up, to show the case. Should we start with or, some anterior? Some anterior frontal anterior, smile. Okay, okay. I think everyone loves the, okay, the smile. Okay, I'm just, just going to flip the camera. I will put it in the in my laptop here awesome okay ah uh, can you see it clearly yep the pitch is still small oh that's perfect very very good quality uh-huh nice so this is what can i i cannot call you i can call this case my ultimate case this is one about one of my hardest case in my life you know mm. if There's you look up of this yes if you look up this Thing, this case and then you search it into Google they say it's uh, drug related but I don't know I don't know mm-hmm. this specifically for what drugs related to this case but things uh, that I don't know uh, that I don't that, uh, that I know is uh, the patient has a really bad oral hygiene you know yeah the patient is really bad oral hygiene I, I asked him uh, how many times he brushed uh, teeth every day and then he said it's readily, you know, sometimes forget to. Yeah. So this is really bad. Yeah. And whatever uh, drug he used, I don't know, but he said that he's already clean. So, so he clean. just, okay. yeah, he just uh, came to my clinic and he wants uh, me to fix the smile. At the very first time, uh, to be honest, this, this patient is a, uh, yeah, he can't afford the crown in direct restoration or something like that. But in this particular case, I focus uh, to fix the oral hygiene first, you know? Yes. Because I realized that the patient is, uh, the patient has really good, uh, has really bad oral hygiene and then a lack of uh, appreciation to, to, to his teeth. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fix the the uh, habit first. Yeah, so I just want to to make him realize that the teeth are precious by fix mm-hmm. the aesthetic first. You know, to make him realize. So uh, I do direct restoration. You know, eight direct veneer in this case to premolar to to premolar. But if you wonder what happened to this tooth, because the tooth, uh, this is the only one that healthy this one is already crowned you know already yeah. crowned 
Yeah, the other is really bad uh, condition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then I try to take lateral photo, as you can see here. Mm. Really, really bad. This is with the contrastor, and even worse in this part in this region. See, it's really. <laughs> it's very severe. Yeah. Yeah, very severe. So, so question about isolating we, the margins. We'll move on to that when you get to that. Uh -huh, yeah. This is yeah. this is a good question. Actually, I have a video uh, of this case, and I never okay. and I never and yeah, I never posted it in my Instagram. Usually, I I I post it. I publish the case in my seminar. Yeah. yeah to become my last case. But this is special for you guys, yeah? So get, for uh, this case... Exclusive, guys. <laughs> yes, of course. For you. <laughs> Thank you, man. For Thanks. dentist of Insta. So in this particular case, yeah, it's better, it's ideal for you if you can do isolation, yeah? Isolation yep. for all. But since it's really, it was really hard to do that, yeah, at the very first time, I tried to put rubber dam yeah, but it mm -hmm. took me like uh, half an hour, you know, to place it perfectly. So I decided to do split them eventually. Yeah. Because it's really hard. It's very deep. Yeah. This is the combination of class three, class four, class five, all in one case, all in one teeth. So in this case, I'm just, I'm just use split them isolation. Yeah. So uh, actually the gum is still shown. So I do also, I do the isolation with the help of the gingiva cord, you know, the big yep. one. And then I dip with the hemostatic agent first. And maybe I will, I'm just going to put the video directly so you can see it, the nice. entire procedure. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Wait. I'm just going to turn you guys... off for this bit. And then so everybody yes, can see it. If you want to put your questions, put it in the little question mark. Uh -huh. down. Uh, I'm just going to say that. If you want to ask me anything, ask everything. Yeah. Uh, this is the UAE flag yeah, because this is for the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely place, man. I love it there. Yeah, Dubai. So this is the case, you know. Yeah. So it took me like, I forgot, maybe six or seven hours to deal with the case. This is not really fast, hard, you know. Not fast, no. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if you're doing aesthetic, it, it requires time, you know. Patience. You can do that. Yeah, if you can, if you can, if you can do this uh, kind of treatment, Maybe one hour is impossible, you know. Mm. So if you wonder if, doctor, uh, did you do retinal treatment? You know, um, lucky me is only only one tooth that needs to be retinal treated. Tooth number twenty-two, yeah, the lateral, right, lateral. Yeah, yeah. The other is safe until now, although it's deep, but yeah, everything is safe. Yeah. We've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, do you ever use mm -hmm. caries detection dye? Yes, I have it in my clinic, but I don't really like it. I trust with my tactile, you know? Yeah. And and then I use microscope like, also. Microscope yeah, I use microscope basically. also. But if you want to use that, it's better. Yeah, mm. use your preference, I think. And uh, th this case was due to drug-related re reasons, right? This is one more yes. question. Mm -hmm. Drug-related. And another question, how are you merging the composite and the enamel? Enamel, yeah. With the enamel, sorry, bro? How, how do you uh, merge the composite and the enamel so it doesn't become very obvious it's there? So how is that interface uh, managed? Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna talk about composite now, okay? Sure. I will. I will. Ah, uh, maybe let's finish the video first, okay, bro? 
Absolutely no, it's no problem. <laughs> So my job here is done because the patient already realized that okay, I have to keep my oral hygiene. I can I have to improve my oral hygiene first. After that, maybe in the follow up, I can replace with the indirect restoration. So for this case, you know, uh, doctor, I'm a bit of a simple person. I mean, if I if I if everything can be simplified, you know. I yeah. just want to do that. Very simple. So I never use. If you search for the journal, if you search for the uh, bre- uh, the uh, uh, sorry, the journal, the 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 brand journal, you see that the anterior can be done with the multiple uh, composite, like let's shade. say frontal laminar, yeah, multi shade. Yeah. For me, if you can do that for at least maybe two shade. Why not, right? So yeah, it's, it's it's more easy for the mm-hmm. clinician. Uh, yeah, and it's it's a bit it's a bit more pr- repeatable because you don't have to do different different mm-hmm. thing every single time. So in every case, I only use two kind of composite, yeah, mm. dentin and enamel. It's impossible to to the principle is impossible to do uh, comp- anterior composite only with with monochromatic. Yeah. So unless you need to dentin and enamel. For the dentin, I I use the very opaque one, yeah, the very opaque one to cover all the the dark area, yeah. yeah. And the enamel, I use the the uh, not the. I'm just I'm not gonna focus with the 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 shade for the enamel, because I want the enamel uh, composite that have that has a very good polishing ability yeah because i i yeah i i read the literature that said uh it's impossible to to recreate 100 percent perfect color match yeah 18 yeah. is is good and 20 is the illusion yeah illusion yeah. that you got from the polishing from your you finishing. have a glossy finish yes yeah, so if you have glossy finishing yeah it will affect the longevity and the uh, it create the illusion. Yeah, yeah. So we so got for a the couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, of course. For a case like this, so we've just answered that one from Kunal about enamel and dentine mm-hmm. shades. Um, mm-hmm. We have some question about your camera work as well. What kind of settings and okay. setup do you have? Okay, for the camera, I think um, I will tell you the background. The back, the uh, the background first. You know. I have no uh, background. I'm not a kind of uh, the peop- the person who likes photography a lot. Mm. So I'm just kind of new in the the, the uh, photographic things. Yeah, I used DSLR after I knew about the dental photography. You know. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. For the camera setup, uh, I uh, my setup is uh, the lowest ISO. Yeah, and yeah. for the shutter speed, uh, uh, one hundred twenty-five, and then for the aperture is twenty-five, twenty-five to thirty-two. Twenty-five to thirty-two. And then, yeah. yeah, if I if I want to make it bright uh, to brighter, yeah, I'm just gonna change the uh, aperture. Yeah. Or sometimes so the the aperture is how much light is gonna be let through to the lens, uh, to the sensor. Yes. Yes, so. of course, and now, and also the depth of the focus, you know. Yeah. Awesome. I think that answers that question. That's really good. Um, mm-hmm. A lot. Of and these for the camera, I think for the camera, I, I use Nikon. Nikon. I love yeah, Nikon. Same. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nikon is very, very, very good to use. It's very easy to use and cheap. Also, I never you I never buy a brand new. I always buy a second hand. You know? Second hand one. <laughs> With a good it's, condition. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in good condition. Yeah, it has to be good condition. It's, the focus <laughs> has got to be working and all that stuff. Yeah. Somebody's asking, do you use uh, dentine shells, uh, you know, for the palatal mm-hmm. shell? Are you working from a wax up or are you working free? Ah, this is a good question. Since this, the patient is uh, in a rush, you know, so yeah. he wants to do, to do all the entire procedure directly. So I, I never had 
I'm a I'm a kind of guy. Uh, I'm a kind of dentist who really love challenge, mm. and and I love to do all freehand technique. Yeah, but if you can do wax up, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. It depends on the situation. If the patient uh, has the time to come back, you know. Yeah, you can do the wax up. It really help. It really helps you a lot. But sometimes uh, I encounter patient who who are in a rush, you know. Yeah. So it's very impossible for me to to do wax up to do the uh, the palatal with the silicon index something. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because it makes it more very easy to make sure you got the right way. Yes, of course, of course. Like uh -huh. Um. And uh, somebody for else. Me, that... Yeah. Go for mm -hmm. it. So yeah, for me, uh, sandblasting as well. I just, of course, yeah, yeah, sandblasting, yeah. yeah. For me, for me, I use silicon index if I want to do mamelon, you know. If I want yeah. to do the perfect halo effect, you know, it's really hard to use it, uh, to make it with only you... use freehand technique because sometimes we have to adjust the length, you know. Mm. Yeah, if you if we uh, do wax up first, yeah, you will define the length uh, of the tooth first, right? But if you only do that with the freehand technique, sometimes it will become too long. So you're just gonna reduce it. And then the, the halo effect, the mamelon will gone. Yeah, because the angle we look at is from here downwards. And then when we look from the other side, yeah, it's completely different. I call sometimes it, I call that, in front and mm, behind. Mm -hmm. mm. I call it distortion. So that's why I really recommend to everyone here, if you work with the anterior, only work one by one. Yeah, if you yeah. deal with the, multiple restoration only one by one and then you have to check it in front position yeah for sure on the deep lesions are you using flowable in the deepest parts on the deep region on the on the flow uh the like uh, when close to the pulp? the pulp yeah yes uh i learned the literature that said uh if you use uh, calcium hydroxide yeah it will not affect anything to the to the pulp. Pulp will help. Yeah. yeah. If if you want to protect the pulp, yeah, let's say uh, bad thing happens like uh, perforation or something, you can use the MTA, yeah, yeah. or glycionomer, glycionomer cement. But if you use glycionomer cement, yeah, the one that you mix, you have to wait it. You have to wait for the twenty four hours. Yeah. Before you in can order to make it perfectly setting, so that's why you can use the 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 one the GI cement with the uh, combination of the resin, you know. Yeah. They are on, like they are on GI. Mm -hmm. But for me, if if I found it not too deep and uh, not perf uh, not uh, there's no pulp explanation. Yeah. So I'm just gonna use flowable to cover all the undercut to make it flat, and then I use the uh backable composite yeah and how many appointments did it take you for this one case that we just saw today how long how many appointments oh how many appointments one only one appointment all in one go you tired after yes. this? <laughs> of course i'm dying <laughs> <laughs> this is why we had to but, yeah, have a holiday after but after yeah. After I see my the result and then the patient's uh, reaction, yeah, everything is it's good, worth you know. It. It's worth it in the end, yeah, mm hundred -hmm. percent for sure. Guys, so many questions. I'm having to choose some here. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Um, we have somebody asking the material that you use. I think they're asking which um, which brand yeah. of composite. Good. Which brand okay. of composite? This is a good, good, good question. You know, uh, the principle is like I said before um the dentin has to be very opaque mm. so uh in this case i use uh, ina ina from italy mycerium yeah and for the for the enamel i use the the composites that i think is the most uh glossy you know in terms of uh, the polishing ability tokuyama yeah. only that only that tokuyama uh palfic lx5 I really want to try Tokoyama. I've heard very good things. I've not managed to get my hands on it yet, but it's in my list. Oh, that's very good, bro. <laughs> you have to use that. You have to try that. Yeah. Especially the polishing ability. Sometimes you found uh, any other brand is, yeah, after you polish it, 
uh, immediately after the restoration is good but mm. after you yeah if you you recall the patient maybe for six months yeah let's say yeah it will turns out duff but tokuyama is very good you know yeah it, a lot of guys who are doing very nice work like you are using tokuyama so it's definitely something that i think everybody should try see if it works nice in your hands yeah and it's also uh, cheap you know is is it okay uh um, yeah i love cheap how, things <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, and so you've done the case like this. Do you prefer doing the mm -hmm. case on the anterior teeth or do you like doing posterior more? Which is your favorite one to do? Um, uh, each case uh, comes with the challenge. Uh, the basic, uh, you know, I really love challenge, you know. So yeah. that's why I love doing, if you see my Instagram account, I love doing a uh, the difficult that I call hopeless, you know. Yeah. So posterior anterior, I think both of it. I I really love both posterior anterior. Yeah. Um. Let's just put the comments back on for a minute. So, mm -hmm. we had somebody asking when you do composite restoration, how do you merge the composite with the enamel that's uh, natural enamel? So you've got you know natural tooth. Then you're putting composite enamel as well. How do you make mm -hmm. that that border so? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, disappear as uh, smooth. Yeah. Seamless. Yeah. Okay, seamless. Okay, so okay, the principle is I love to do the extension, so that's why uh, the first thing is uh, let's say about uh, let's talk about the bevel, you know. Yeah. If you if you. Uh, if you see my uh, post Instagrams, yeah, you notice that my, my bevel is always, um, let's say it's not 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 too minimal invasive, you know, because I'm not 100% agree with the minimal invasive things. Because if you look up on the journal or the article, they say minimal invasive, but but the case that they are shown is is only like class four or something yeah? never any case like a black cavity class yeah. three yeah, it's very hard it's very the idea is is you know the the more before you create it's the more aesthetic look you get but you have to make sure that the yeah it's not too much yeah so you can see the 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 highlight in my uh, instagram yeah i have yeah already make that uh, default things and then also the literature so i use uh what uh, the the technique that i call uh the uh starburst bevel you know so basically you have to make a bevel is uh, a little bit wider and then make it irregular okay yeah. so it's locking in mm -hmm. And then and that the first uh, the first thing, and then the second one is I always love to make uh, overextension. I love I, I I always love to make excess. So that's why let's say in the case is the class three or class four uh, in the mesh show, I would like to ex uh, extend the composite yeah. on the distal. But eventually, yeah, at the at the at the finishing procedure, I'm just going to to uh, reduce it. Uh, until it's minimum mm. with the this, so uh, that's not uh, direct veneer actually. I would like to call it uh, modification, you know, with the direct veneer, yeah. but not actually direct veneer. Do you have any photos or uh, tutorial of your polishing protocol? This was one of the of questions. Course, of course, of course. Guys were asking. Of course, I have so many videos here. If you want uh, any kind of procedure, I have it. So you can see it. Of course, I have a lot of video here. So if you want to specific video, I can show you. You must be one of the only guys who takes more photos in clinic than me, which is uh, very, very surprising. <laughs> yeah, I think for each case, uh, almost like 100 photos, I think. Wait for it. Uh, polishing, right? Polishing protocol, perfect. Yes, I'm just going to flip it. Uh, see, 
So I only use three instrument here, three yep. tools. Yeah. The first one is the disc. Yeah. Yeah. The disc. I only use the the coarse disc. You know. Okay. The most aggressive one, because after you already use it for like five times, it will become the smoother one. So yeah, I never work, work its way down. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then I use the, this one, Daikam If. You know this tools, bro? Yeah, yeah. So, this tool is really, yeah. This tool is really mind blowing because because it changed all my my dentistry. Because before I knew about this tools, I use a lot of sequence. Let's say uh, the 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 stone, the polishing paste. But after this, after new, but the this this one. Is it lamb's wool or goat? change. Is it that one? It comes with a pink one as a pre-polishing, and then the glossy finish, the gray one. I, I will show the another video. I think this one is more clear. Square. Any more questions in the comments, guys? You, you guys have been amazing in, uh, in uh, the viewers. We've got some really, really interesting questions. So we're, we're learning quite a lot from Rizal because of your questions. So keep them coming in. Yeah. Let's have a look. See? So for the softlex, for the disc, yes. I, all, I use the disc for make, it, make the surface flat. Flat. Yeah. To make it flat first. And this one, the pink one, yeah, the Eve from Germany. Yeah. From German. The pink one is for make it smooth. Yeah. yeah. I never I never use polishing paste. So this is really simple. Only three of them. No and paste. The other one, no paste at all. And the last one is the gray one. Yeah. And then yeah. done. The gray one is for the the uh, final touch, yeah, for the glossy finish. Yeah. Somebody's asking what are the implications of hybrid prosthetic? Sorry, bro. So Can somebody's asking, Jasmine is asking, what is the complications of doing hybrid prosthetic? Hybrid prosthetic. I think she means doing a, a direct, uh, a direct, you know, crown or veneer. Yeah. Oh, what, what is the, the, what is what, sorry? The, the, the pluses and the minus of it. So what is the complication? Of oh, the minus. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think in Indonesia, uh, this is a very good question. If we if we if we look up the journal, the article, maybe if, maybe he's he asked me that question because I did a lot of a uh, uh, very hopeless dude. I don't with only direct restoration, right? Mm. So in Indonesia, in Indonesia, there's so many patient. There's so many patient who can't afford crown. Crowns, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Since it's very expensive, yeah. It's almost like yeah. It's very expensive if you if if we compare with the direct restoration and sometimes the other people has no time to come back, so they want very fast treatment. Mm -hmm. So I always tell them that this is not definitive uh, restoration. Yeah, there are so many risks. Yeah, maybe their uh, failure, maybe they will cracks. Yeah, so they have to come back maybe for one month. Or six months to 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 do replacement with the indirect restoration. Yeah, and mostly they are agreed. Then they want they are willing to try. Yeah, they try. So to I do always. It, but, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I realized that yeah, there there is a minus of the uh, the this treatment, but I think the idea is uh, we have to make a good agreement with the patient. You know. Yeah. If we reach that agreement, if something bad happen, yeah, it's not. Yeah, we already talked about that with the patient. That's the so thing. on on your polishing protocol, we've got lots of questions there. Uh, what was mm -hmm. the names of the three instruments you're using, and what RPM are you running them at? What the RPM? Oh, I actually I never measured the RPM. You know, bro. Is it? I never <laughs> measured the RPM. <laughs> I normally go you can feel that up and down a bit. But 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 to be honest, to be honest, uh, we, I will show this. To be honest, uh, yeah. In this one, yeah, the glossy, the final for the final touch. Yeah. I use it very, very fast. Okay. Yeah, yeah but unfortunately, I've never measured the the RPM. Maybe yeah. you want to know exactly. Maybe you can read the manual. Yeah. 
but for this one do not use it too fast and then too pressed because it's also ab abrasive you know yeah yeah it's going to smooth it very, yeah. very quickly and take too much yeah yes and then the names on maybe you have well. to try it the names of okay the name this is the disc from from 3m 3m yeah, okay this is the disc polishing disc from 3m called softflex everybody has that one mm, yes of course <laughs> this is the pioneer of this you know yeah yeah and then the other one is yeah it comes with a couple uh tools yeah this is for pre-polishing yeah called dicom if yeah pre-polishing one dicom if yeah and the other one is yeah the same dicom if the gray one it is for the final touch for the glossy finish mm. oh i didn't know i could do this mm -hmm. what about the tooth gum line tooth gum line uh the zenith line yeah, I, I think that's what she. Oh, maybe she's talking about the uh, the margins, the mar how you manage the margin. Oh, the margin. The, the digital. I margin. manage the margin mm -hmm. because it's very deep, deep margin, you know. Yep. So I use the big digital cord to retract all the margin. Since I know I don't use rubber dam here, only split yeah. dam isolation. So the, uh, the gum line is the thing that you have to uh, do a regular follow up, you know. You have to see whether the the patient has improved the oral hygiene or not. If if you see that the, there's a plot there, you have to remind the patient that, the that they have to improve yeah. the, the hygiene cleaning, and then you have to do repolish. I think. Yeah. And uh, Kunal is asking, do you edge the dentine too, or just the enamel? So, what is your uh, your your bonding process and etching process? Yeah. If it is the vital tooth, I'm void to edge dentin. Mm. And since I'm afraid that it will become a force of sensitivity. So I only selective edge yeah, by etching only the enamel and mm -hmm. just leave the dentin. Okay. Do you use right. clamp to retract the gum? No, I don't use clamp to retract the gum. Only use clamp for the anchor, tooth anchor, to okay. make the rubber dam retain. To hold it in, perfect. Yeah, to hold it. And are you doing IDS, immediate dentin seal? Since I work one by one, yes, I do IDS with Optibone. Perfect. Uh, because I, 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 yeah, I do one to approximately one hour. You know, it takes a long so time. So it's impossible for me. Yeah, for it's impossible for me to just let the other open like that. I think that's really important to emphasize there, that you're kind of taking a long time over every tooth. It's not a quick process. You, know, <laughs> yeah, you can't be rushing this treatment. Um, yes, never do the treatment too rush, you know. You need time. <laughs> uh, shall we have a look at a posterior case? Uh, something posterior. Posterior case, okay. I can't what get rid kind of, of posterior now? case you want? Nikki's question is going to be stuck here forever. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you uh, can answer uh, until, it, around, until around. midnight, bro. <laughs> oh, my days. Guys, I'm trying to remove it so you can see the question. It's not happening. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Uh, okay, the posterior. Now the posterior game. Okay? Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me Maybe class me. two. I will show you the class two. I have a lot of videos here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. I forget the keyword. Guys, should we restart the stream? Because I can't get rid of this question. It's It won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to restart Bro, the stream. I'm ready. I'll, oh, restart. restart. Okay. Because I can't get rid of the question. Uh, this is my fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One second.